Week three, day three. It's not just a case of getting in, thrashing around and getting fit. Hey. <laughs> You're in kind of overhead, surely. <laughs> Group ride with the boys, three or four hours. It's a ridiculous winter bike for starters. I'm going at the back. That's it now, we've run out of daylight. Pushing 300 watts, no control. Swimming is one of those disciplines which is actually really hard just to get on with because it's such a technical sport that you have to actually think about what you're doing. It's not just a case of getting in, thrashing around and getting fit. Like there's so much to it and I want to just try and help out a little bit with that. And what I found, both thinking about what my clients are experiencing, but also what people in the squad are doing and what I'm seeing in the squad, so that on a day-to-day -day basis I can help people out or just think about what they're doing and how they might be able to do things a little bit better in order to easily fix their strokes. Another day, Wednesday. Week three, day three. Training's going well. Just uh, making sure that I'm ticking by. Got the volume up, so decent amount there. So it's all about just keeping it there and not getting too fatigued. Morning, nice lion. <laughs> Wednesday lions even. Yeah, I just tend to do work. So okay. <laughs> more opportunities to do work yeah, than yeah. Uh, it's Wednesday's vlog. So I've got a vlog all day. Uh. <laughs> It's better than doing it throughout the week because then I've got like a specific day to actually do stuff rather than like trying to haphazardly do shit throughout the week. I'll try and ask you to get some uh, some footage of some drills. Yeah, I can get some. Yeah. I flip flop a little bit with this because in one respect, I'm like, just get in, just swim, just get on with it as best you can. And, you know, there'll be a time where the stroke does become a little bit more important and we have to look at the technical aspects of what you're actually doing. But then on the other hand, I'm like, and I acknowledge that swimming is actually very, very difficult to get technically correct. And not everyone has, I don't know, years and years worth of experience in the water because I grew up in the water. I was doing swimming every single day and therefore I've just got the feel for it. I understand what's going on with my arms and legs. I'm pretty coordinated with it now because I've just, I've thought about it so much and I just understand what's happening where and why. But I guess that's where I come in and I try and explain what's happening where and why and try and allow you to be able to do that in the water for yourself. Like last week you were, uh, you were really grumpy because you were, uh, you were tired because you'd uh, over on, uh, on Tuesday. I did over swim last Tuesday. And I was grumpy last week. I told you not allowed to be paid. What are you changing out here? Well, because someone locked the door. <laughs> and I was late and ready. I really do find, especially with my coached athletes, that swimming is the hardest one to actually get in and do because it's a little bit either feared or it's just tough to get in the water on your own or this, that and the other. Or they don't know what they're doing in the water in terms of their arms and legs and coordinating and having that feedback. So again, like there's so many good tutorials online, which I've watched personally as well to help my own technique. But it's a little bit of an obsession. Like I feel as though that I'm constantly trying to break down the stroke to understand what I'm doing and how I can then aid my clients and coached athletes to be able to do it for themselves. And one of the things that I really, really honestly do think is the most underrated drill in swimming is the three-quarter catch-up drill. And the three-quarter catch-up drill is basically catch-ups, but you're not connecting your arm at the front of your stroke. And the whole purpose of this is to try and get the timing of your stroke correct. I think it aids the process of that timing and just simplifies it a little bit more than just trying to do either catch up or just trying to get the timing right. In one of the videos that I've already done and explained it in, effectively what it does is it makes you hang your extended arm or your the arm front arm out a little bit longer than what you would usually do in your stroke. And what that does is it allows you to bring your body around a little bit further before initiating that stroke or catch uh, part of the uh, stroke, the front end. And that then puts you in the right position or head position 
in order to get the right catch in the right position and rotate around within the stroke. So I really believe that if you do this stroke, you can do it slowly to begin with, and you can do it with paddles and flippers to begin with, or fins, and then progress to like one paddle, one fin, and then progress to just a normal stroke. And I think that if you do that slowly to begin with, and then speed up over time, you'll be able to really understand what's going on within your stroke as well. And the timing will get better and better as long as you understand that when you're initiating the catch with, say, your left arm, you are also kicking down with your left leg in order to rotate everything around at once. Because if you think about it, your the arm that's out of the water isn't catching anything and therefore it's not aiding in any rotation whatsoever. It's the things that are underwater propelling you that will aid the rotation. The hips don't do anything. The hips don't do anything because they've got nothing to rotate with. There's nothing there. Yes, you can initiate your core, but there's nothing catching the water to force the hips around. If you think about it, the catch at the front of your stroke and your legs are what rotate the hips and the head, everything, and the arm out of the water. So if you're able to catch and kick at the same time, it's really forcing the body around quickly and it will enable you to drive that hand into the water and give, give you some more propulsion. The catch-up drill emphasizes that far, far more. So you're hanging the front arm out a lot longer, you're bringing the arm over and you're catching and kicking at the same time to really drive forward. But again, it's a three-quarter catch-up, not a full catch-up, so don't connect the hands at the front. You want to be just starting the pull just before the hand enters the water and then you can get faster and faster at the drill. Sick! Once you're comfortable with that, you can obviously just start swimming a little bit more normally with those things in mind. The catch and the kick at the same time with the same side of arm and leg, and then drive forward with the other uh, leg and arm at the same time as well. <laughs> you're on the side of overhead, surely. <laughs> it was like an alleyway where no one can see. All that the fins and the paddles are helping with is to emphasize that process and emphasize where you're catching, where you're kicking, and really keeping you a little bit higher in the water as well so that you're not just sinking whilst you're concentrating on that drill. So yeah, I do use pull paddles and fl flippers, sometimes all at the same time, just to try and aid that kind of thinking about the stroke while staying high in the water. You don't want to be sinking down just because you're overthinking all of the other things. But yeah, I think it's a pretty simple drill to do and not have to overthink too much, but get the timing right. So yeah, give it a go. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if there's something better, do let me know. Like in terms of timing and that kind of leg to arm kick uh, balance, I think this is probably one of the better ones and probably the most underrated one. But if there's something else, just comment below. I'm always open to suggestions and I love using other people's advice from my clients or my colleagues. So yeah. Oh, group ride with the boys, three or four hours. Just getting it done. It's a ridiculous winter bike for starters. I mean, it's almost as ridiculous as this. But this is what I will be there. I mean, they're very nice. Yeah, I think that really is. No, like vlog content. You're a Strava. Oh yeah, take my Strava as well. <laughs> you want to catch one? Yeah, go on then, give us your Stravas. You want to catch one? Have your Strava. <laughs> I think this is legit the first time that I might have underdressed. Okay. Oh. 
I'm going at the back. Don't rush. Don't rush. your left, that's it. That's it. Steady water on the lens. Can't see shaggle. That's it now, we've run out of daylight. This is the end. Say goodbye. End of the end of the photochromic ones. Hey? Let me try them in. No, I'm gonna no. buy them when I get home. Hashtag Sun God. Sponsor. Sun God. I've come off the front of the group for five minutes and they're doing all sorts of messing around. Pushing 300 watts just to try and <laughs> pull off the line and stay with them. No control. Or maybe I'm just weak. Maybe I'm just not pushing right. I don't know. Thanks for watching. Do hit subscribe button if this was any use hit that bell icon and the rem to remind you of when the next video is coming out. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.